previously on Van Gogh Travelers. Let's go check out Marathon Key. There's a key called Ramrod Key. I pulled into this uh, park over here. It's called Pine Channel Nature Park. Wow, this one is really nice. Ah, the palm trees. Oh, I see a McDonald's here. I haven't had McDonald's in a bit. Ah, McDonald's. What a delight. If you have not had a mocha frappe from McDonald's, you don't know what you're missing. If you go around to your right and then your left, you'll see the Cracker House, which has cool stuff. That's right here. All right, we got the map and we're in. Man, oh man. I don't see a, a bathroom on the map. I might have to pull over and just piss in the mangroves. So this is the uh, house and you normally can uh, take a tour inside of the house, but we're here a little too late. So they don't have any tour guides right now. They're tickling my feet. <laughs> that is so cool. Oh my gosh. Hey, you don't even have to go get a pedicure now. I'm out here uh, trimming these trees and it's about 100 degrees out. I feel like I'm gonna faint. I'm just getting over COVID, so that doesn't help. But uh, if you look at these clouds, there is like no wind coming through here whatsoever. And that's a big factor because I feel like I can't breathe. It's crazy. I might have to finish this another day. All right, guys, let's get it popping. Welcome back to the channel. We are back in Key West and it is hot as hell. I've got the AC on and I'm still sweating, but we're gonna be here for another a week and a half. And I can't tell you, I cannot wait to get back to Brunswick, Georgia. We were a little worried because we've got our RV in Brunswick and um, they had uh, Tropical Storm Debbie, but we checked it out. The only uh, thing that happened was the uh, power got cut off, but they turned it back on. When we get back up to Brunswick, we might have to um, start fresh. We might have to throw everything out of the refrigerator and start all over. But before we left there, we didn't really want to leave too much, so it shouldn't be too, too bad. But yeah, it is hot here in Key West. I've been working, uh, doing some lawn service as well as working the bus station. And uh, it's been going pretty good. I'm not complaining. But I am happy to get out of here in about, uh, I think we've got about eight days left. And I'm so excited. I think I had my fair share of Key West. I don't think we'll be here or we won't be back down here for a long while. We'll see. If we get that itch, we'll come on down. But I got to go back up to Brunswick. I got a job waiting for me up there. So I'm super excited about that. Beautiful Key West. So one of my jobs here in Key West is working for the uh, Greyhound bus terminal. And I have a really interesting story about that. Back in the 80s, I used to work for Greyhound in uh, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. I used to uh, work at that, that bus terminal there. And uh, I was in my 20s and believe it or not, the person that is running this station here is the same person that hired me. Our uh, friendship spans over 30 years. It's incredible. And I remember getting uh, that interview. I still remember him calling me up and uh, telling me that I got the job. And I was really, really uh, happy because before then I was working, uh, just doing factory work and I, I wanted to get out of that because it was hard work and it was just hot down in Florida working in those factories. So for me, uh, working for Greyhound was like getting a job working for the airlines. So I went in and accepted the job and at the time I was making $5 an hour. To me, that was a lot of money at that time. So I thought it was hot shit. I, I think I was making a little bit less than that uh, working at the factories, but when I got hired making $5 an hour, uh, that was a big deal. So I stayed there about, I believe six or seven years, it could have been longer, but here I am back in Key West working at the uh, Greyhound bus terminal. And my job is pretty much the same, selling tickets, making sure the uh, passengers are 
getting on the uh, correct bus and uh, leaving at the right time. And also making sure that their uh, baggage, their baggage meets the requirements. So I really like working here. And like any other job, you do have your issues. I had a guy show up uh, five minutes before the bus was leaving the other day. And um, he couldn't find his ticket. The bus left. He came into the bus terminal. I, I was getting ready to close. And he was being rude and he was angry and I think he was on something, it was hard to tell. But anyways, I was super nice to him and midway through, I kind of lost my shit and I told him to get the hell out of the bus terminal and get out of here. I kind of felt threatened at that moment because I was the only one in here. And uh, like I said, I thought he was on something. So I kicked him out and um, you know, it was funny because he came back at five o'clock in the afternoon, he bought another ticket. And he was fist pumping me and saying he was sorry, that he was stressed out and everything was fine after that. So I wanna rewind a little bit on this video and show you what it was like coming into the bus terminal when we were having a tropical storm Debbie. So we're expecting a tropical storm here today in Key West. Should hit about uh, 10 this morning and we should get a lot of rain as well as a lot of wind but it shouldn't be too, too bad. Nobody really knows. So we'll just have to see what happens. The only thing that concerns me is that it's going to go cross over into the Gulf and then head back in inland towards uh, Tampa and up its way to Brunswick, Georgia. And we've got our RV in Brunswick right now, which there's nobody in it, so. I mean, it's all locked up and we put everything inside when we left. So I'm crossing my fingers that uh, nothing happens to it, but we'll have to see. Very windy. The palm trees are starting to sway really heavy now. This is what a tropical storm looks like. This lot right here is usually filled with uh, rental cars. I don't know if this is a rental car or not or if somebody's in it, but there's a lot of water right there. It's like a lake and it's pretty empty right now. So everybody has rented cars to get out of here. A lot of flights were canceled and that's the only thing about Key West. There's only one road in and one road out. <laughs> I just saw a trolley go by and I can't believe they're still doing tours today. There was about uh, six people on that trolley. Yeah, so we ended up getting through that mess and I gotta tell you, it wasn't really that bad. Key West did not get the full brunt of that tropical storm. We got whipped around a little bit. There was a lot of rain, there was a lot of wind, there was some fallen trees, but within a couple of days, it was all cleared up and Key West was back in business. So in the beginning of this video, I was talking about um, having COVID. This is my second time around that I've got COVID and I gotta tell you, it was not pleasant. It started on my throat and I couldn't eat anything, I couldn't swallow. Anytime I would eat something, it felt like I was eating fucking razor blades. So Gina ended up getting COVID first and then I ended up getting COVID. I went to the doctors, I got checked because originally I thought I had strep throat and they checked for that and I did not have strep throat, but I did check positive for uh, COVID. So they gave me a shot of steroids and man, that cleared up my throat right away. I was able to eat, what a freaking relief that was. So I think the way this all started was that Gina, she wanted to go on a fishing trip and she'd been talking about this for a long time. Last time we were here, she did not book, so she did not go and get to do it. 
So this time around, she made the uh, the trip and she had a great time. I'm so glad that she did it. She really likes to fish and she was able to do that. And she caught a lot of mahi-mahi. But on that boat, there was about eight people. And Gina, when she got off that boat, she was fine. She started getting a little sick. But the next day, she was feeling really, really bad. And she went and she got tested and she had COVID. Fortunately for her, this time around, we did a video on this, but the first time she got it, she almost didn't make it. So I'm glad it wasn't that bad for her. We did a reversal this time around. It was me that ended up getting it really bad. It took me about a week and a half to get rid of it. And uh, yeah, so that's that. But she caught a lot of mahi-mahi. The trip itself was four hours. She paid $200. And I was so proud of her because she did better than anybody else on that boat. And they went ahead and filleted all that mahi-mahi. We've got it in the freezer now. We're going to be taking a lot of that stuff up north. But we've been cooking a lot of it here, and it is so good. Fresh mahi-mahi. That mahi-mahi right now is going for $20 and some change uh, per pound. So with everything that we got, it definitely paid for the trip. I'm not a fishing guy. Gina wanted to go, so she went. I did not go with her, so I didn't do any video. But I did catch video of her when she got back and the fish that she uh, ended up catching. You excited? I'm so excited. This is a bucket list item for Gigi. You're going what, for four hours, right? Four hours out four there? Four hours. We leave in about a half an hour and we'll be back at noon. And the boat is called the Reef Runner 2. We might be having fish for dinner. There's Gina coming back. She sent me a couple pictures. She caught a couple of uh, big ones. Thank you, yeah, I'm good. Oh, quite a few, huh? I caught three mahi and a tuna. Tarpons down here. Wow, those are big. Hey, you got a shark. Yeah, Holy smokes, look how big those are. Wanna do another one? Another hot one. Man, oh man. <laughs> ah. <laughs> ah, man. That grass gets in my nose, in my mouth. Ah. You know, these push mowers, they're, uh, they have a uh, push assist. Back in the day when I was uh, doing lawns as a teenager, Back in Miramar, Florida, I would have my old man's lawnmower and I would go around the neighborhood and I would try to find some yards. And uh, when I did find a yard, they would pay me about 10 to $15 an hour. Not an hour, 10 to $15 a yard. If I got lucky, they paid me $20. But um, that was about two or three hours worth of work and it was hard work. 
but that taught me a lot. It taught me how to go out, talk to people, and it taught me how to get work and to make money. And till this day, I'm still the same. I'm a hard worker. I've got good work ethics. But I have to say, and this is my personal opinion, that I rather have less money and more time. And I say that all the time. When I used to own a house, I used to work like 60 hours a week, hard work, go home on the weekends. I would have to do yard work and just catch up on, on chores. And that wasn't life, that wasn't living. Never really had, never really had enough time for myself or for the family or what have you. So now I try to live my life that way. I rather work less and uh, you know, just have maybe less money. I hope it doesn't uh, bite me in the butt down the road when I fully retire. I don't think it will because we save money now, we live frugal and our expenses are really low. So we're able to still keep up, even though we do have inflation, we're still below that. The only time we ever really feel it is when we go for gas or, or food. But anyways, yeah, I don't think I'll ever own a house again because I don't wanna ever go back to that. I try to live my life this way. I try to have a balance because I know, or I knew a couple of friends that I had that are no longer with us. And uh, they worked hard their whole life. And one of them retired a millionaire. And it's crazy because within two years or a couple of years, they were driving their grandkids to school and uh, they had a heart attack and that was the end of it. So I don't wanna be that guy. So I try to live my life this way and try to enjoy it now. Because they say that when you retire, let's say in your 60s, you have a good 10 years after that, that you're really gonna be able to live life. You know, if you don't really take care of yourself, then it'll be shorter than that. But 10 years at least, give yourself 10 years that you'll be able to do stuff. And um, you know, a lot of people don't make it that far. And you see it a lot, right? And sometimes it's uh, just financial hardship, right? There's uh, uh, something that, that's catastrophic that happens in your life and then financially you're drained. And I see that all the time. Whether you're rich or poor, it can happen to anybody. And I don't wish that on any of you guys or even myself, but it does happen. So I just try to try to live my life like that, you know, just less money, more time. And um, so far, so good. I've been able to go out and enjoy myself and spend a lot of time with friends and family. This is the thing about friends, which is kind of funny. I just, I'm just going to bring this up. But, you know, people always figure, oh, man, you know, you have when if you retire, you have all this time on your hands. Yeah, and that may, may be true, you know, because you think, well, I'll go visit family and visit friends. But everybody else is still working. So nobody really has time for you. So you don't really even get to do that when you retire, which really kind of sucks. But anyways, yeah, those those are my thoughts on, on the whole thing. And um, it was a hot one today, but got it done. And uh, now I'll go back, jump in the pool, and maybe go to the beach. You're living your best life, Boo Boo? Good morning. Guys, that is what life is all about. Thank you so much for tuning in. I know I say that all the time at the end of the video, but I really do appreciate it. Also, big shout out. We made it over a thousand subscribers. That was a big deal for me. So thank you for making that happen. If it's your first time on the channel and you have not yet subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. Also, if you like the or you like this video, give us a like. That definitely helps us out. I'll see you guys on the next video.